Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome back um, to another Floss Tube. Um, I am Jade. I'm the 310 Stitcher here on on uh, Floss Tube as well as on um, Instagram and Facebook. Um, my contacts are down below. So if you'd like to follow me on uh, any of those platforms, if you're not al already, check out the down bar and they're there. It's been a couple of weeks since I've done my last video. Um, so again, welcome, welcome, welcome back to everyone, um, both existing subscribers and new people. If you're new, then I hope you find something that you like here. So um, what I have for you today, I have a whip update. I have a new start that's kind of sort of not a new start. And I have a little bit of investment. So I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, copy, <clears throat> excuse me. I really like the Hathaway Stitchers. Uh, I was watching their latest, their la latest video and they were talking about not stash enhancement, but investments. And so I really like that. So I do have some investments to uh, to share with you today. So I have things sort of all around me um, today. And so I'm gonna be reaching back and forth, but why don't we start with uh, our whip update part? No. Yes, I'm gonna start with the whips. I also have a little bit of knitting to show. But I'll save that for after the whips are done. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you is Veil of Death, and let me just pull that up. I should have done this already. As much as I think I am organized, I am not. go. So Veil of Death is a heaven is a heaven and earth design chart. The artwork is by Chris Ortega and that is what the completed project will look like hopefully. I don't know if that focused or not but anyways I love this piece. Um, so in the past couple of weeks, I'll show you in just one second, but let's see here. In the past couple of weeks, I've put in um, 1,337 stitches. And this is where I am. I'll show you. I can't back up enough, but here. And I made my way to the other side. So the bulk of the um, 1300 stitches is all in this area here. I don't think any of this was here when um, when you saw it last. Yeah, so this this entire area or 1300 stitches of it. I really love this project. I love how just the the swooshes and the uh, the different colors. There's more colors than you'd think in there, but I just love the effect. Um, this project is being done uh, two over one half cross on 25 count even weave. Uh, it's just a khaki colored that I got on, um, I think on Amazon. Anyways, I find, I really love this project. I find it very, very relaxing uh, to work on. Let me see if I can turn this off because that is, mm, that's not so good. See if I move it a little bit. Okay, sorry, <laughs> it's bothering me. Um, yeah, I just I find this project really relaxing. So uh, this one here. So my uh, goal for this year was to do to get this to ten percent by the end of the year. 
Uh, in order to do that, I had to do 523 stitches um, a week. And I've been doing that most weeks. There, there, there have been a few weeks that I didn't manage that, but I also had many weeks where I did a whole lot more than that, So, um, which I did in the past couple of weeks. So that should be that should be doable. Um, I'm at what? I'm currently at 7.6%. So, and we still have what, 16 or 17 weeks. So it should be doable to get to that. And if I miss it, I miss it. It's not a big deal. It's not, it was just an arbitrary goal um, to get me to work on this. So I am goal oriented generally, uh, especially with work. So I um, I like to set these goals uh, for myself. I don't have to, you know, if I don't quite make it, uh, it's not a big deal. It's kind of like the um, the old cliche, you know, aim for the moon, and if you fall short, you'll still be among the stars, right? So it's better than nothing. Okay, so right now this project, uh, yeah, I'm at twenty. 9,660 and 7.6% and there are 390,825 stitches in that just in case you were curious. Okay next I reach over to this side. Okay this is my home sweet home so this is my anniversary piece let me show you what it looks like This is um, charted by the Cross Stitch Studio. Is it going to focus? Maybe. Cross Stitch Studio, the, um, the artwork is by Diane, Diane, Diane Dengel. Uh, if you're curious. So this one, <laughs> my goal for this one, um, and I apologize for those of you who've heard it a thousand times already, but my goal for this one, for the end of the this year, I wanted to get it to 50%. Um, I started off at 24.5%, so basically 25.5% this calendar year, um, which would again, take me to 50%. And then oh, what I've decided is that I'm going to take another uh, two to three years. I want it done sometime in 2027. Um, so which is an extension of what I previously had. So it won't be done in time for my 25th wedding anniversary, but that's okay. No big deal. I think just the fact that I'm doing it is uh, he appreciates. So I showed you what it looks like. I took this out of the Q-snap. Let me show you the part that I was working on. Two parts actually. So this one. Uh, so this, well here. This is the far right hand side of the piece and the parts that I've worked on. So what have I done? I've put in, I think around 4,000 stitches. Mm, not quite. 3,416 stitches in the past two weeks uh, or since you saw it the last time. So where did those stitches go? The majority was all in here. So all of this that and a bunch of uh, ninja stitches were, had been left in here um, and all of most of this was empty so I completed all that and let me tell you that was a pain in the ass <laughs> pardon my language but holy moly confetti like you wouldn't believe I, I was so annoyed because there's a lot of places where it was just 
so I had this whole I had this whole piece in the cute in the cute snap actually this whole square was what fit in my eight and a half by 12 Q snap um, and I was just I wanted to complete these pages because I, like I said I only had that like these bottom sections left I wanted to complete the pages the pages actually end you know a little bit above the end of the stitching um, there's a lot of places where it was just like one stitch here one stitch there in that entire two pages there might be two stitches like really is that necessary like for example this dark blue it's one stitch that's it that's all that's everywhere I went um, so that was a real pain in the ass so what I was doing anyways uh, I didn't want there to be lines so this will be new for those of you who have been following along on my journey you'll know that I don't typically park I tried it didn't like it um, but what these are here for is because I was hitting the edge of the uh, of the cue snap and it, and those colors were being used directly below so I got tired of cutting my thread after only one or two or three stitches so I decided to just park them so I didn't have to do that uh, so that's why those are there okay so that was the first 2,000 stitches and then um, I did I'll show you a little bit more so all of this black here and a bunch of stuff in here all the way across so that was all blank before and so that was the other 1400 stitches or so so let me show you the whole thing so far I don't know if I can get the whole thing in there we go there we go isn't it lovely oh I love it uh, so yes yeah, so I am I had left um, I had left this whole section in here um, I think because after I finished this page I wanted to just get a quick win and uh, for that week and do just black so this is solid black here so I think when I moved my cue snap that's why I ended up in just this section so now I'm I'm going back and I'm filling in here now there is a whole bunch more black in here and so I think that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna leave this little section for now um, and just do the black and just sort of try to catch up or move a little bit ahead um, of where I am just just with the black I have the next couple of weeks are really 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 busy um, not only not only for work but also I am um, I'm out of town I'm out of town to, so today is Wednesday the something Wednesday the 4th September the 4th um, and so I, I I leave for out of town tomorrow morning so tonight there isn't gonna be there isn't likely to be much stitching because I have to pack still <laughs> and um, I'm doing a uh, I'm doing a, a tarot uh, and doing a tarot uh, weekend um, somewhere so anyways I need to pack all my stuff and I'm gonna have I'm taking the train so I'm gonna have four and a half hours each way on the train and I had been typically I would just bring my dragons of the sabbat because it's just black fill in I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this uh, for this trip and then next weekend we'll see where we end up next weekend I might take the dragons but if I bring this I could get a whole bunch of black done and maybe get a little bit ahead of my goals that would be awesome because the weekly goal for this right now is killing me. <laughs> 
it's uh, 1,811 stitches because I had several weeks where, you know, over the course of this year where I haven't been able to, to stitch. So the goal, which started at like 12 or 1,300 has crept up to 1,800. So if I get a bunch of stitching in, then my weekly goal will hopefully come down, which I will be very happy with because this is like three stitchy sessions uh, right now in order to get this weekly goal and I don't want to work on it that long, that often. Okay, that's home sweet home. Where am I right now? Um, I am at 40.9%. So I've got 9.1% left for this year. Uh, I am at 137,255 out of the 167 812 stitches which is a 50 percent goal so i've got about about 30,000 30,500 stitches left for this year which i think i can do especially if i catch up this weekend i think we'll see we'll see so that is home sweet home put that over here Next, I'll, speaking of the dragons of the Sabbat, let me show you what it looks like first. I pulled this up so many times, you'd think that it would be uh, here. No, I don't want the zip files. What do you mean? There's no... Please hold. Because for some reason it's uh, not coming up, which I don't understand. Um, all right, let's do it this way. I'm so sorry. There we go. What? Okay, so this is a this is a pain free. This is a chart from Pain Free Crafts. Um, the artwork is by Ann Stokes. It is a retired pattern, so you can no longer get it, but. Um, so because I, for some reason, it wasn't showing up on my phone, I just put it in the web, assuming that the pain-free crafts um, thing would come up. And uh, instead, what came up was a woven cloth version of it. Anyways, but that is what it will look like, minus the fringe. Let's see if I hide my face, focus. There, I think that's better. Anyways, you can have the blanket of it for $85, Canadian. <laughs> okay, so my goal for this year, for this piece, was to complete 100% of the black on the project. So you can see there's like black on the outside, there's black inside in between the dragons and in the center. So my goal for this year is to complete 100% of the black so that next year I can start on the dragon. And um, I will talk about the plans later. But anyway, so that is what Dragons of Sabbat looks like. And uh, in the past, so since you've seen it the last time, I've put in a lot of stitching. I've put in 9,641 stitches. So 
this is the project that I'm doing a uh, that I'm doing a um, challenge with Alara. Um, check out her check out her channel if you don't already. I'm sure you do. Let me take it out while I talk. I'm going to take it out of the Q snap because you won't see much. So we're doing a challenge. I, I asked her if she wanted to do a challenge with me because I had about 30,000 stitches left of black and I was flagging. Like there are 251, there's 1,561 stitches or something of black, 562 stitches. Um, and so I had done, you know, 230,000 of them or 220,000 of them. So that last 30,000 stitches, I was really flagging on. I just, I was, I like stitching black. I don't mind stitching black, uh, but I just was ready for it to be done on this project. And it's gonna be super wrinkled. So I apologize about that, but I do not, um, iron my pieces until they're complete and I've had this all wrapped up so that's why it's all it's all wrinkled okay so yeah so the challenge is I were I needed to finish my 32,000 stitches um, by the end of the year and Alara has to finish um, 16,000 stitches so half of it because she's doing I'm doing mine three over one half cross on 22 count and she's doing hers one over one full cross um 32 count i think i'm not sure but anyways um i don't know if i'm going to be able to show you the whole thing in one step one sec i might have to i'm gonna have to back up and step stand up i think okay Isn't it awesome? I love how you can see the outlines of all the dragons in the sections that I completed. I just can't wait. I can't wait to get started on them. So um, that section's completed. That section is almost completed. This is where I have the Q-snap right now. And so I have less than half of the circle to go around. Guys, I have, I have um, 16,909 stitches left of black. So I will probably, most likely, have all of the black finished in the next, well, let's say by end of October which is fantastic. So, um, yeah, I'll have it done by the end of October, which is fantastic because I have to catch up on some other, some other projects like Home Sweet Home, but also um, I have to catch up on a new start and I have to catch up on Mary Mushroom Village, which I'll show you in a minute. So I'm going to put this aside because I think I will bring this anyways with me on the train ride. Um, may not get any, any work done, but I always, I don't know about you guys, but do, do you pack your stitching first before you pack any of your clothes? I do. Um, I always pack my knitting and my stitching first, first and foremost. <laughs> and my tablet, of course, um, so that I have something to stitch on. Um, yeah, so the reason I got so much stitching done on dragons, like I said, I did what's 9,641 9, stitches, is because I, on this past Thursday, I went to the cottage. Um, it was unexpected. I didn't think I was going to be able to go because I had, um, I was supposed to help. My daughter had asked me for help on Saturday at a market she was doing and then that didn't pan out so I ended up going to the cottage and 
Um, I brought two projects with me. I brought dragons and then I brought the Christmas rant, um, which I didn't end up working on. So I'm not going to show you that today because I only ended up working on dragons. I had a migraine, uh, for a good portion of the weekend. Some of the weekend was really, Saturday was great. The rest of the weekend was rainy and overcast and the pressure was just killing me. So I just, I sat and just stitched in the dark. <laughs> okay. We're already 25 minutes in. I apologize. Um, so, so I am at 234,653 stitches out of the 251,562 black stitches that are there. The whole piece has 604,000 stitches and I am at 38.8% of that entire piece, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I think there's another, I think the other 16,000 is going to add another few percentage points. This is pretty good. So in two years, I'll have gotten this thing, you know, over 40%, which is pretty, I'm excited about it. I really, this is one project I really want on my wall. So excited. Okay, next. Speaking of, oops. Speaking of Mary Mushroom Village, so this is the Heaven and Earth Design Sal, which let me show you what that looks like. Hmm. Why is my phone not working today? Okay, so we're gonna have technical difficulties. Let me grab my iPad here. I just have it on my, I just had it on my um, stand. Um, Okay, so mark up RXP. Close that. Merry Mushroom Village. So silly. Okay. So this is the 2024 Heaven and Earth Design Stitch Along. There were 10 designs to choose from. I chose uh, this one, which is called Merry Mushroom Village Picnic. Merry Mushroom Village 1. And this is a snippet out of Amy Stewart's Merry Mushroom Village picnic piece, which is much, much, much larger. Uh, if you want to see that, I think it's Tatiana. Uh, what's her channel name? Oh, I can't, I'm, I'm so sorry, Tatiana. I'm, I'm, blanking on your channel name. I will link her down below um, al along with the Hathaway Stitchers. But um, she's doing the entire piece, which is really, really, really cool. So have a look at, at that. So since you've seen this, I have put in how many? I've put in uh, 1,287 stitches. So I didn't actually work on it this week yet. And I probably won't be able to. Actually, I know I won't be able to. Um, so I'm going to have to catch up when I get back, which is also a good reason why I'm happy that Dragon's the Black is almost done. So this is where I am here. So those almost 1300 stitches um, is all in here. I'm working on this is two pages. So there's page one, two, three, four. And these are pages five and six that I'm working on together. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because while well, you can see like, you can see how this, there's all these, uh, not bulk stitching exactly, but I think you know what I'm trying to say, right? They're just continuous 
lines of the same stitches. So that's what I'm doing. So that's where I put the 1300 stitches in. Um, it's not too bad. It's not too bad in terms of confetti. Like there's, uh, there's a lot of different colors in there. Like you can see in here, there's probably like six or seven colors in there. But what I do like is because there's really long lines of them, you at least, I at least get to finish my thread, right? For m most of it, most of the time I get to finish my thread, which is good. I like that. Um, so yes, that's where I am there. And um, there's, I think, uh, yeah, so I'm on quor the quarter two pages. So quarter one was the first three pages, quarter two is the third three pages. Um, and I think I have about 5% left of this. And then I'll move on to the quarter three pages and I'll be able to work on those for a little bit before the quarter four pages come out. So they come out in, uh, October 1st, October 1st. And I apologize for my dog. This is all the, the threads that go with them. So let me just throw this back in here. If he doesn't stop in a minute, I'm gonna have to go, I'm gonna have to pause the video. I think my son just got home and um, my dog doesn't like when anybody drives in front of our place. Okay. Next. Uh, did I tell you the details? I'm doing that one on 28 count linen. One over one. No. Two over one, half cross. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. Okay. Next, I want to show you. It's not on here, I'll just show you on my iPad. Okay. So the next one I want to show you is by the Colosseum. So this is a pattern by the Cross Stitch Collectibles. I'm sorry, I don't know who the artist is. It's quite, quite, quite old. So it's not a contemporary artist, I'm pretty sure. That is what it's gonna look like. So all you're gonna see, uh, so I've completed this section here and right now I'm working on the sky. So that's what you're gonna see. I'm not gonna pull the whole thing out at the moment, but actually what I can do, beautiful chart. I can show you how far I've gotten on the chart. So that's how much I've done. Ignore the, the magenta color because that's the color that I have selected at the moment, but that's where, that's where I am. So this one I am doing on uh, 22 count even weave that I tea dyed myself. This way. And I'm doing it uh, two over one half cross. So you will, it, there aren't lines it's just that I'm, I, I, it's gridded with a uh, water soluble marker. Don't, don't worry. Those are going to come, come right out. As soon as water touches it, it disappears. Um, but it's also still, there's still one color. So I was color completing basically, uh, the first three, three or four pages, three or four pages. Um, and so there's one color left now that I just have to complete all of that. So I'll probably do that the next time. Hi, Bobo. No barking, okay? No barking. You'd be a good boy. Uh, yeah, so that's where that is. What did I do? Did I tell you? I did not tell you how many stitches I did. 
Uh, so I haven't worked on it this week. And again, it's not gonna get worked on this week. Um, I have only, I've done 737 stitches since the last time you saw this. My goal is to get it to 25% by the end of the year. Um, I'm currently at 18.2%. It should be doable. Again, my weekly goal is only like 524 stitches. So it's going to go up because I won't, I know that I won't be able to work on it this week or next week. Um, so that 524 requirement to reach my 25% goal is going to go up, but probably not by, not by much. Um, and this one I find super easy to work on. Again, it's 22 counts, so, or actually I counted it out to be 23 counts. So, um, so it's pretty easy stitching and like, and like I said, it's only one color. So I should be able to catch up pretty quickly. Okay. Next. Next is Sunset in Venice. And I think this was the first Heaven and Earth design that I started. Mm -mm -mm. Pictures. The artwork is by Dominic Davidson. That is what it's going to look like. It is gorgeous. Uh, the Stitchy Witch um, commented on one of my last videos that, um, the, and I, I've had other people as well uh, say that this, this is just so tempting. Um, but the Stitchy Witch has River Rock, River Walk, River Walk charm. <laughs> I don't know why that's so difficult for me to say, which has a lot of the same elements. It's got the bridge and some water and some buildings and trees and stuff. But anyways, it's, um, it's gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. So what have I done since the last time you saw this? So first of all, my goal my goal for this year was to get this to 33%. I'm about 14,000 stitches away from that. So since the last time you saw this, I only put in 702 stitches. Again, I have not worked on it this week, um, but what I've worked on, so first of all, let me show you the whole thing that I've done so far. Beautiful chart. That's what I've done so far. And the part that I'm going to show you is down here. This is awesome. I love this piece. I should work on it more. Anyways, um, that is where I'm at. So I've been sort of working three pages concurrently. Um, again, there's been a lot of sort of I don't know if you'd call it bulk stitching, but stitching where I've been able to use my entire thread, which I prefer to do. The whole thing is wrapped up, so I can't show you the whole, I'll, I'll show you maybe next time, or maybe once I finish these pages, since I showed you in the, uh, on the iPad, what that looks like. So like I said, um, I put in 702 stitches. No, I did not. Oh no. No. I actually, okay. That was done right after it filmed. Okay, so I, since you saw this, I put in 784 stitches. Um, my goal is, my weekly goal to get to 33% is 798 stitches. So I didn't quite meet the goal close enough, but I haven't worked on it last week or this week. 
probably not next week. Uh, that's okay. You know, life, life happens. And like I said, once I get some of these goals, um, completed, like the dragons, then I'll have more time, right? To, to work on my other ones. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited about that. Um, okay. I have, that's it for the whips. I have a new start, but first let me show you a knitting whip. And let me show you what it what it's gonna look like. So it is a um, it's a sweater. It's a sweater by uh, Tin Can Knits, and that is what it looks like. Or what it will look like just on that color the last time you saw this I had done the collar so I had done the collar and which is a lot of the lace pattern um, but actually the last time you saw this I had yarn I had needles completely separate uh, so I had made a mistake in how I, I don't even know how I did it, but the instructions for the, for increases are, are poorly written, let's say. They could be clear. And so I finally, of course, I'm in the middle of a row. Let's see if I can... Okay, anyways. I'm in the middle of a row, so I'm in the middle of the um, increases for the raglan. And you can see the, you can see all that lace. It's gonna be like this, right? Um, yeah, sorry, I'm in the middle of a row, so I can't extend it bad bad me anyways I am doing this on um, merino cashmere fingering weight yarn from color Mart, which is awesome 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 okay so Let me put that down there. All right, on to what should have been my new start. What should have been my new start is The Sorceress by Joan Elliott. So it's this one here. That's not too bad. Um, and I did not I did not get a chance to start actually start it um, because again I've been away, but also partially because I couldn't make up my mind about the fabric. So I think now I have made up my mind about the fabric. Um, this is how I store my fabrics, by the way, with who the fabric is by, what it is, and the size, and who it's from. So this one was by the sewingshop.ca. Let me take the pins out. So I don't stab myself. Okay. I got this from Kaylee at Stitch North last year. And I haven't known what to do with it. So this is what it looks like. It's, I don't know if the sparkle is coming through, but it is sparkly called creme, creme de cassis. Um, and I think this is what I'm gonna do. The piece is big enough probably do it this way, right? Maybe? 
I don't know. You guys tell me, should I do it this way or this way? Uh, I'll show you the picture again. I don't know. I guess the darker, the darker part may be down here. Anyways, I couldn't make up my mind and I'm still honestly not a hundred percent. Um, so it's 14 count. So I would do this, you know, two over one, which would be great because I wouldn't make the counting mistakes that I would make with doing it over two, which I would for sure if I did the 28 count. Um, so that's great. I, and it's sparkly. I love it. I love the colors. Um, I'm not sure the 14 count, how that's going to look. I guess I should be okay. Like I prefer the look of the 28 count for like the part, the parts of the fabric that are going to show. I prefer the finer look of the 28 or 32 count. So these are, well, I mean, you've seen, you guys have seen 14 count, what that looks like. And the squares are pretty big. Do you think it's going to detract from, from the, from the pattern? I don't know. I'm not sure. So I am going to, I'm still going to start this. I'm still going to pick a new start because this one should have been a start. It just with everything that happened, I didn't get to it, but I am definitely going to pick another, another start today. Um, yeah, I just, I can't wait. I can't wait to start this, but it's going to have to wait until next week. I think I was going to say, unless I decide to bring it with me, but I don't think I will. I think I'm going to stick with the plain, just the plain, you know, no, not needing the, the pattern uh, of the black for dragons and home sweet home. I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. I still have um, some things to talk, talk about. I have, um, what, what do we call it? Investments <laughs> to show you. But first, let's pick the um, new start and the additional whip that I theoretically could work on. Because, you know, even though I failed for the past four weeks at it, doesn't mean that um, it'll be that way in future. I, I don't even, okay. I know that I'm not even going to get, you know what, I know that I'm not even going to get to all of the focus whips in the next two weeks. So I'm not going to pick, an, an, I'm not going to pick another whip to work on because I know for sure that I won't get to it. So why even bother? Uh, plus I'll have the sorceress that I'll have to, I am, I am going to start and really, um, if I do have extra time, which I don't think so, but if I do, I would probably work on the Christmas rent because I would like to get that finished by the end of the year. Yeah. So what we will do is we will pick a new start. Okay. Ready? What is that? What was that? I think uh, that's not it. It's the one on the side of it. Oh, polar bear mama and cub. Okay. So this is one that I, um, I, it's in my, it's actually in my shop. I, I have, um, charted it myself and okay. Just going to show you what the polar bear looks like.
so this is the mock-up. I love, love, love this. Um, I love those colors, like those turquoises and blues are are amazing. Um, to borrow the crow stitchers uh, terminology, um, they are doing legacy whips and non-legacy whips. The legacy whips, of course, are uh, projects that they want to finish to leave for a family or whatever. Um, this one is not that. This is not going to be a legacy whip. This is just one that I want to that I want to work on um, because I love I love those colors. So if I ever get it finished, great. Um, I know exactly who this would go to. Probably my daughter. But um, I have no no issues with just leaving it. Excuse me. I will link the crow stitcher down below. Uh, if you like my full coverages and my projects, you'll definitely like theirs. Um, they have a lot. Um, yeah. So I don't know what else I was gonna say there. <laughs> Check them out. I will link them below. Okay, so we've come to the investment. And then I'll show you the investments and then we'll talk plans. All right. Uh, so these investments, I blame on Kim the 303 Stitcher <laughs> because she showed me um the silk that she got from silks for you and i had to have it and so this is it here this is actually two skeins of it it's uh at the time it was their latest one called mood and i just I just love all those colors. Look at it. Look at it. Love, love, love. And so what am I going to do with this? I've never stitched with silk before. I've knit with silk. I've spun silk. And actually, I, I meant to pull out the silk that I had spun to see if I could use it as um, embroidery floss which I think I can because I I I spun it quite thin so it would probably be the equivalent of two strands of uh, two strands of the commercial silk anyway I just uh, love it so that's mood what I've decided I'm gonna do with this I have decided that I am going to start Saga along my first long dog sampler. I know I always thought I hated samplers. Didn't or not hated them. That's a, that's way too strong a word. I disliked I dislike a lot of samplers. Oh my earring just fell off. And the back was stuck. Hold on. Hopefully that just happened. Uh, okay. The biggest part that I don't like, not the only part, but the biggest part I don't like about samplers. Uh, you know, I think they're pretty and stuff. I just don't want to stitch them. Um, mainly because of the alphabets. I have zero interest, less than zero interest in stitching alphabets. Um, but I've been finding some that are called samplers that don't have alphabets, like the nature sampler, which I had started um, and I love, and it's just birds. Anyways, do you like my earrings? They're little, I don't know if that's gonna come up. They're little dinosaur, dinosaurs. Uh, yeah, so. 
think that's I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the arches here let me show let me bring it up because then it'll make sense when I'm talking about it Saga. okay this is gonna be really small obviously but it'll still give you a sense so I think this is their biggest one which go big or go home right mm, I'm sorry that's not focusing but anyways so what I've decided to do is I'm gonna use a um, a gray like a charcoal gray for all the archwork and then I'm going to use Mood for all of the stuff inside the arches. I think that's what I'm going to do. I I think so. I'm going to try it and then if I don't like it, I can always rip it out. Um, I did get, because I wasn't sure what to do, I wasn't sure whether you could mix DMC or CXC and um, silk in the same project. I have been assured on the Long Dog uh, uh, Facebook group that yes, absolutely you can. So I had ordered some, but anyways, before that, I had ordered some silk. Um, in different shades of, all different shades of gray. in all different shades of gray, gray to see what I, um, it is 100% silk, to see what I liked best with this as well as the fabric that I chose. Um, I don't think I'm gonna use silk. I think what I'm gonna do is I am going to use a, DM, a gray from DMC, probably like, uh, at $37.99 I don't remember I have three or four cones of doom of different grays like the 415 for anyways I'm gonna use one of those as the arches and then this for everything else I hope that it will look good let me know what you think that's gonna work but wait there's more of course you couldn't I couldn't let a, you know a skein or two skeins of if this is coming all the way from Australia I couldn't let it travel on its own so I did pick out a few others so this one is PR 173 I have no idea what I'm gonna use them for yet I'm gonna use them for something wonderful that one so just bright pinks and oranges and yellows and greens and blue actually there's quite a few of the same colors in mood <laughs> maybe that's why I liked it so much but yeah so that's that one then I have PR 213 so this one was a a nice pretty delicate delicate one so there's some peachy oranges and bright fluorescent pink or magenta whatever you call that different blues and a very light kind of green that's really just a, I think that's just a transition from from this blue to the to that Don't know what I'm gonna do with it. But for now, they're just going to go in my stash. Oh, those lights, the reflections driving me crazy. Okay. This one is, of course, I took it off before I looked. PR097. So I love these colors. So there are purples and yellows and 
light blues and greens. Love that. Um, of course, I only got one skein of these, and so I know there's 400 meters, so hopefully I'll find something that will work with that amount. This one is PR025, and this is my favorite color, that teal color. I almost bought two of these, this one, but then I, I decided not to. And finally, this one is PR203. <laughs> Can't see. So we have some green, chartreuse, purples, blues, indigo. Um, kind of a vomit green. Kind of a um, I don't know, what do you call that? Is that mauve? I'm not sure. Anyways, that I thought that would be I thought that would be fun for something too. Um, and there's always the possibility of mixing these two together because it has a color that's maybe not a hundred percent but pretty close pretty close in there yeah so those are my investments I really like that I really like that um, that word <laughs> or that way of looking at things I should say um, okay. Oh, I just have something really cute to show you guys before I go to plans, which is how I store my, um, my leftover yarns. So for example, I finished my husband's socks. I have this much yarn left. And, um, the first thing this does is go into my squares blanket. Then it goes into my um, northeasterly blanket, the one with the, the chevrons, long chevrons. If there's any left, but probably there won't be, but if there's any left, then I store it in this little guy. I don't know what this came with. Came with. It came with something, um, cookie dough or something, but anyways. So once I've put the yarns into those two blankets, I put it in here and uh, I have a lot more yarn than this, by the way, just they're in a, they're in another basket right now, but, but anyways, I just like, I like it. I like it. So there's some, I know what I've done with each one of these things. Um, so it's nice memories to look at. Okay. Let's talk plants. And I'm gonna quote somebody else this time, Jen the Caffeinated Crafter. Um, welcome to my floss tube where the whips are real and the plans are fake. <laughs> um, okay, so why do I say that? I say that because first of all, the goals that I make, um, because I'm a goal-oriented person generally, so if I have a goal, then I'll strive to, to make it. If I don't have a goal, and it's just like, eh, whatever, then I don't tend to, I tend to not pick things up as often. So, um, so yeah, so for example, the Royal Games, uh, Mir Royal Games 2 Mirabilia that I have, I haven't been working on, even though I'm not that far from, I'm well over, I'm over 50% for sure. And I could probably get that done if I work on it for a couple of weeks, but I didn't 
set out to plan to have that completed this year so I'm just I just never pick it up um, and if it's just if it's something that uh, has something that's not perfect about it so I have mis you know I have mistakes maybe that I need to rip out or you know where I miscounted or I uh, I don't know I don't know whatever or I, I have to pull floss from my master set in order to finish like I just it's just I don't know I don't know what it is it's just one more thing that I just don't get to oh I do have one more whip actually but I don't see it here, so I'll show you it next time. Um, it's my flower of the month. So I can show you what it will look like. So I am on the final flower of the month. Hello, squirrel. <laughs> okay, one second. One second. Um, so I'm on, yeah, I'm on the last flower of the month and I plan to have this finished. That's why I was think, talking about thinking plans. Um, and it is this flower here. So I have not started on the flower, but I have completed the outside border all the way around. So this is going to get done before the end of September, um, which again is awesome. It'll be one more goal finished. Um, oh, oops, sorry. It will be one more goal finished and um, it will be a faux as well. And that will also free up time to catch up on some of my other ones. So that's why I'm not really worried about about the you know last week and this week and next week um anyhow so back to plans um what was i saying i've had migraines uh, more often because it is time for some more injections and that's actually the reason I'm going to Toronto tomorrow is because my appointment is tomorrow for the injections um, in Toronto. So uh, the past couple of weeks have been a little bit rough that way. So um, I don't know what I was going to say. So the plan. So I'm off. So I'm off to Toronto tomorrow. Um, for my injections and then I have a uh, just outside of Toronto I have a I have a tarot thing so that's gonna be the weekend um, and it's gonna be fun I just rented an Airbnb with um, with a friend and it's gonna be great I'm bringing my stitching bringing my bathing suit because there's a hot tub I'll bring a bottle of wine that we can share it's gonna be a nice little break I think it'll be I'm really looking forward to that um, Will a lot of get st stitching get done? I don't know. I might just be too tired at the end of the night after my uh, tarot thing um, to do any stitching, but I will have the time for sure on the train. So I'll have four and a half hours there, four and a half hours back. I may do all nine hours on Home Sweet Home, or I may do, you know, one of them on the trip there and one of them on the trip back. I don't know. It'll just be what I feel like. Um, and probably it'll depend on, uh, I guess my seat, if I have seatmates and how much space I have, cause for home sweet home, I'll have to pull out my iPad, right? Um, to figure out the, where the limits are. Um, Anyway, so that's my plan for the weekend. Then I'm back on Sunday night, late Sunday night. Monday to Thursday, I'm back at work. 
Um, and so I probably will have some time. I will have some stitching, stitchy time next week. Um, probably not a ton, but I'll try to get some, I'll try to get some stitches into Mary Mushroom Village. I've decided at this point, um, and this ties in with plans, but I've decided at this point that, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to try to finish Mary Mushroom Village. And part of it is because, again, we're talking about the goal-oriented thing. Um, I'm goal-driven. So right now there's a, there's a carrot at the end, <laughs> right? If I finish, um, if I finish the whole thing, I'll, I'll get, um, all 10 of the charts that were offered for the for the stitch along plus two more uh, projects that I or two more charts um, of my choosing from their website so it'd be great to have more <laughs> more projects that I'll probably never stitch why not it's free crap um, and if I don't if I decide to stop I may not pick it up again I may just leave it and I may not pick it up again. It's not my favorite project. Uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to aim to finish that project. I think I can. Um, I just have to do about a thousand stitches a week on it. Um, I don't think I ever told you I'm on, for that project, um, Q2 is almost finished. I've got 4,000, 4,500 stitches left on that quarter two, and then I can start quarter three. Uh, okay, so so that's those two projects that I have plans for. Um, so yeah, so next week I'll try to put in time on that, and I'm gonna try to also put in time on um, Veil of Death and on the Colosseum. Those are small goals, right? They're only five or 600 stitches each, so that would kind of be one night for each of those. Um, so that's kind of three nights taken up. I probably won't work on Home Sweet Home or Dragons because I'll, ha I'll have worked a ton on them on, the, on this weekend. Um, if I can, though, I would like to uh, get my stitches in on Sunset and Venice. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I will, or I might leave since Sunset in Venice for now and work on the flower of the month instead. Uh, flower of the month. So once I do the outside border, so that was kind of one night, maybe a little bit more than one night, but once I do the outside border, then the rest of it, so it's, I think it's about four. 4,000 stitches if I remember correctly. Um, the rest of it I could get done in about three or four days. So if I want to like working at a regular like not trying to do it quickly or whatever like working at you know in little chunks here and there I can get it done in three or four days. I could try to I could do it sooner if I wanted to but I get bored so I don't. Um, but if I could start that and get that finished soon in the next couple of weeks that would be good uh, so yeah so I don't know flowers of the month or sunset in Venice then next weekend again I'm back in the Toronto area next Friday Saturday Sunday so again I'll have another nine hours of train ride um, there and back and so again, uh, either Home Sweet Home or Dragon to the Sabbat will come, will come with me and get a lot, get worked on there. Uh, so that will be those. And then when I come back, I uh, will be back in town for a couple of weeks. So I'll have my regular stitching and hopefully catch up on some of the stitching and finish flowers of the month uh, that week, hopefully, because then in October, October is a crazy busy month. Uh, both my kids have birthdays and I, uh, near the end of the month, I'm, my entire family and I are going to Italy. 
for a couple weeks, so I probably won't bring much stitching there. Uh, if anything, I'll probably what I'll probably bring is Christmas Ranch because it's small, it's compact, and I can just work on it. You know, a few stitches here and there, and I'll probably just bring my knitting. Uh, yeah, some socks or something, or maybe the sweater if I get the sweater to the point where I can. I don't have to look at a pattern. That would be good. Yeah, I don't know. So, those of you who watched, in terms of 2025 plans, those of you who watched my Stitch With Me video, um, first of all, I wanted to say uh, thank you for watching <laughs> my Stitch With Me's. Um, and not, also, I wanted to say, don't worry, not to worry, for those of you who like to see the stitching, rather than the person's face while you're watching a stitch with me. I'm going back to that. I just, I wanted to try something different. Um, so those of you who haven't watched, I basically just sat there and chatted. A lot of people have said to me, you know, it's kind of like um, sitting and stitching with a friend, right? So I wanted to try something different. So I had the camera on me just like this and I was just chatting as I was stitching. Um, and then at one point I did, I did focus on the stitching, but it wasn't you couldn't see that close um, because I was stitching on veil of death in my lap and it was a little bit awkward um, I decided not to do that again because uh, I was looking down you know obviously I'm still I'm stitching as I'm talking so I was looking down a lot so you you know if you were watching you got to see the top of my head and I don't don't like that um, so going forward, my stitch with me will be just focused on focused on the stitching. Um, in terms of chatty, you know what we talked about um, the royal we, what we talked about, what I talked about was um, my pl was plans for twenty twenty five. And I'll say it again, I may change my mind 25 times between now and then between now and the end of this year um, but I have started putting some I have started putting some some pen to paper so in my stitch with me video I was like that's where I was actually working things out a lot of how a lot of um, a, a big way for me to work things out um, in my head is actually by verbalizing them um, because then I can actually see see how things will work and in my head I don't know I just that's how I tend to work things out problems everything I, I the solution will come to me as I verbalize it whereas if I just keep it internal I can't always think about it or not as quickly so a lot of the stitch with me was me just verbalizing ideas that I had, what I want to do, um, you know, uh, I don't want to copy people, I don't, I like doing my own thing, um, you know, and everybody has different ideas, there's a lot of similarities. Um, how people do like for example in terms of the I didn't even show you this but you know I have I've talked about the, I've been doing this for two years now but I have my uh, board I have a big board in front of me that's like four by eight it's like a sheet of drywall um, that has all of these magnets on them each one has one of my projects um, and just the ones that I've particularly worked on since um, since I saw you last so for my floss tube I just I just stick them on here so those are the ones that I worked on um, a lot of people have whiteboards a lot of people have cardboard you know poster boards um, I'm not I, I, I don't think I'm gonna do that I'm gonna stick I think I'm gonna stick at least for now with what I've got I like being able to see um, here let me just grab one I like just being able to see 
you know, at a glance what the project is, how many stitches there are in total, um, what I'm at for now, what the goal was uh, for this year, and what the percentage that I'm at right now. I like being able to see that as, at a glance. And so I really like the way that I'm doing this. Um, however, what I have realized this year, and I'm, I'm impressed with myself that I actually managed to um, actually managed to stick with my plan. Like I created this plan for this year, last November. So I started it last November and you know, here we are almost a year later, 10 months later, and I've actually stuck with this entire plan the whole time with the exception of dropping a couple of projects uh, because I was very overwhelmed. My situation changed. Um, and so I, you know, I no longer had uh, as much time to put in as much stitching as I had been doing earlier in the year. So I had to drop a couple of projects, which is fine. Um, but for the most part, they stayed, uh, they stayed the same. So I had, uh, what eight focus projects and I realized that that is too many uh, it's too many for me uh, well it's too many for me because the goals for each of them were f substantial and I you know they required like eight or nine thousand stitches uh, a week and it was just getting to be a little too much so that's why I haven't even been able to work on any other whips uh, over the past month even though I really want to um, I just want to make my goals more so <laughs> that's why things are the way they are uh, so for next year what I decided to do so a lot of you gave me some great ideas thank you so much for that um, and it comes back down to setting goals. So I decided, one sec. Get some water. Uh, so what did I decide to do? I'm gonna grab my iPad. I went through all of my whips and I decided, okay, um, what I want to do and I, I talked about this on my Stitch With Me video, so I apologize if this, is a, if this is a rerun for you, but what I want to do is I'd like to set myself up for success to get two whips done a year. Ideally full cover, at least, ideally at least one of those would be a full coverage per year. So what I did was I decided on which ones those were going to be, not forever, just for the next two or three years, which ones I want. And I put a date to them. I put either, um, you know, June or December of a particular year. And so for the next two, 25, 26, 27, so the next three years, I have, I put out those ones that I want to finish. And so the ones that I want to finish in 2025, obviously those took the majority of my goals of my stitchy time. Those are going to take the majority of my stitchy time. And, um, and then I left myself, I didn't make, um, so that's only one or two, right? So that's only one or two. Uh, for that year. So the rest of the time, so those would be, you know, reasonable goals or probably, uh, let me get my, my, I made a spreadsheet. <laughs> Let's go to 2025 tab. Um, so I did a similar thing to uh, Jesse Marie does stuff in terms of, um, in terms of putting a percent, uh, it was not a percentage, a set number of stitches to to projects. Um, so she does it based on how old the project is. I didn't do it that way because my projects are all less than three years old. So what I did instead was to the full coverage, I put 5,000 stitches 
and for the non-full coverage I put 2,500 stitches for all of them. So that would be for all of them except for the ones, those two focus projects for the year that I want to set myself up to finish, right? So those ones have higher goals. So for example, um, so hopefully this is making sense. So for example, uh, I want to finish Apparently not next year, it's just non-full coverage. Um, <laughs> yeah, next year it's all non-full coverage because I'm nowhere near finishing full coverage. Um, so for example, I would like to finish um, my video game sampler by the end of next year, December 2025. That's a bad example because I don't know how many stitches are there. let's okay so let's look at the nature sampler so the nature sampler um, I want to finish by December 2025 and I know how many stitches are in that piece I have a re remaining what's remaining I'm at 5% so what's remaining is 37,635 and so over the 52 weeks that's 724 stitches a week that I need to do so I only have like three four I only have one project that has more than a thousand stitches a week for next year, and that is my home sweet home, because I still ha I want to finish that by 2027. Um, so in order to make that happen, uh, I, what I've decided to do for home sweet home is, um, so this by the end of this year it'll be at 50 percent. By the end of next year I want to be at 70 percent then 15%, then 15%. So it'll be done in three years. So 2027, it'll be done. Uh, so in order to get to 70% next year, that's 67,000 stitches. So that one I have to do 1,291 stitches a week. Um, and it's no big deal because the following year will only be 15%. So if I don't make my 20% this year, I can always, you know, I can make it up I'm not worried but that's the only project that has more than a thousand stitches the other few projects um, again that I'm setting myself up for success with are just one two three four five six seven eight so there's eight projects um, which include the Coliseum so you've seen that this year that's got a similar stitch count to this year maybe just a little bit more but not much because I want to get that to 50% uh, my dragons of the sabbat I only want to get one dragon done next year I yeah that's it one dragon one dragon is 44,000 stitches uh, so that's 850 stitches those are half cross per week I can do that that's that's very doable. Uh, home Sweet Home we talked about. The Nature Sampler we talked about. That's 700 stitches. Pompeian Lady. Pompeian Lady I would like to get completed by June of 2026. So that one has um, 99,000 stitches remaining. Um, and I decide, I'm at 6.6% .6 right now. What I decided that I wanted to do um, so this is an arbitrary goal and I may even drop this further right now I have it set to 33% uh, by the end of next year um, so that I could get uh, is that right because I'm not working on it this year so next year Okay, never mind. That won't be done 2026. I don't think it can. Like, well, the the whole stitch count is only 106,000. Like I said, there's only a hundred less than 100,000 left. If I could get 33% done in 2025, that will kick me up over 40%, um, and that's only 530 stitches a week. 
So that is totally doable again. I've been like, that's the same number of stitches that I've been doing on Coliseum this, this uh, year. And it's been great. It's been, I really like it uh, because it's been relaxing. That's a reasonable, I can do that in two or three hours because they're again, they're half cross. And I can um, get them done, yeah, in two or three hours. Uh, what was I gonna say? And I typically do more, actually, because I, I don't like swapping my projects if I'm working on one project, unless I've done the whole lot and I want to switch for some reason because of a lot of confetti or whatever. But typically I will just work on one project for one day. Um, so I've, I've been getting you know, six, seven, eight hundred stitches on that uh, in a week. So even though I don't work on it every single week, I, I catch up, no problem. Which, and this this year, like I said, I haven't worked on it in, uh, anyways, every single week, but I'm still gonna make my goal. Um, so all of them are around that, five, six, seven hundred stitches, half stitches. Um, the, I do have some, Full coverage so veil of death I do want to sorry um, I meant full cross but anyways veil of death uh, I'm getting it's gonna be at 10% by the end of this year I want to get that I want to do another 10% so by the end of next year that's also 750 stitches anyways all that to say if we call those my focus projects just because and I'm only gonna say focus just because I'm setting myself up for success for the next three years um, yeah I'm setting myself up for success for the next three years um, so that's why I'm calling them that but that's only 5700 stitches a week and that is more than doable. Even on the days when I don't have, even on the weeks when I don't have a ton, a ton of time, I can do that in like three days of stitching, especially if there's a weekend in there. So I can do that, which leaves me with quite a bit of time probably to work on my other projects. Um, if I were to work, if I were to work on every single one of my whips, my current whips, and applying that 2,500 stitches for the year for non-full coverage and 5,000 stitches a year for my full coverage, um, that brings me up to, to 9,300 stitches a week, which is a stretch. So it's not, it's not gonna happen, right? I'm not gonna work on 50 pro it's it's basically it basically works out to 48 stitches a week for the t for the non full coverage or 96 stitches a week for the full coverage but it's not going to happen every single week first of all 9,000 is a, is a lot um, uh, is more than I can I've been able to handle these days um, so it's not going to be that but even if I get like half I can just start at the top like do what I was doing earlier this year and just start at the top, work my way down for one week, and then the second, like just the second week, whatever I get, you know, so okay, so sorry, let's back up. Do my focus ones first. That's my 5,700 stitches. If I have time, and I still wanna stitch, then I will just start at the top of the list. They're all, alf they're alphabetized, and start working on those 48 and 96 stitches. Um, however many I feel like getting <laughs> that week. Um, and then the next week I will carry on. So I'll only get part way through the, I'll probably only get part way through that, through that list. The next week I'll just carry on down that list. So all of them will start being, will start getting rotated in. Um, so yeah, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, Yeah, so my focus projects again, Coliseum for next year, Coliseum.
because I want that finished December 2026. Dragons with the Sabbat, that one is, I've decided, is probably going to get finished December 2029. Um, we'll see about that one. Um, Home Sweet Home by 2027. The Nature Sampler I want done by the end of next year, which should be possible. Um, the Pompeian Lady I want done by June of 2026. The Royal Games 2, the Mirabilia, I would like to have done by June 2025. Because really, I should have it done this year, but I don't think I'm going to get to it. So uh, by June 2025, I want that off my plate so I can start the next one. In Sunset in Venice, I would like to have finished in June of 2027. Um, maybe December, but we'll see. Veil of Death, I would like finished by June of 2028. And Video Game Sampler by the end of next year. Um, yeah, so. I, and then Funky Chickens, by the way. It's not a focus piece, but I do want to have that finished by the end of June of next year. Uh, so yeah, so I think that is, I think that's how things are going to work. I just, I have my handy dandy spreadsheet, which tells me how many stitches per week <laughs> based on the goal date. I don't have goal dates for all of them. As you can see, proposed finish date. I just picked particular ones. Um, I want to enjoy my stitching, uh, not feel like it's a job. Not that I, not that I don't enjoy stitching now, I do. But uh, with dragons, it's been feeling a little bit like a job because that was a really big goal. So I have done how. Oh, Hold on. Dragons. I only started that March 2023. So we're a year and a half later. So in 18 months, I've done 230,000, 235,000 stitches. That is a lot. And it's great that I know that I can do that but it's too much. I don't want to do that. So this coming year, one dragon, that's my goal. The next year, maybe I'll do two dragons. It all depends. We'll see how it goes. But um, yeah, I would like to try, I would like to start moving some of the non-full coverage along and getting them complete. Um, you know, and I would like to get a little bit of progress on my other full coverage as well, even if they never get 100% finished. So that is my goal. Um, theoretically, what I could do is I could start this goal now. So similar to last year where I revised my goal, I set these goals in November. That's when I started the new goals for this year. Um, I could start them now, I guess, but I don't think so because I have Mary Mushroom Village and that needs to be a finish. And I have Flowers of the Month, that needs to be a finish. Um, and the Dragons of the Sabbat Black needs to be a finish. Like I, I want to have, and the Home Sweet Home needs to be at 50%. So I, those I think I'm going to just stick with those, with those solid goals for now until the end of this year and then next year we'll move on again like I said the plans may be very fake uh, I could change my mind 50 times between now and the end of the year uh, but we'll see how it goes anyways that is I think that's all I have for you um, this week that was a lot I don't know if I will have time to do a stitch with me. I will try to do a stitch with me next week. Um, and again, it will be focused on the, don't worry, it will be focused on the, uh, on the stitching, not on my face. 
Um, but yeah, and my plan is still to continue starting new projects every two weeks because I do have a lot of projects. Um, I had originally been thinking about doing start at September, but then I decided that was going to be too many projects in one month. I didn't want to do that, so I'm I'm going to continue spacing them out uh, every two weeks based on um, based on the wheel, and yeah, they'll just get added to my whip list, and the projects that. Um, Oh, this is what I was going to say is that so next year, so this year, my project that has been, even though it's been exhausting, the project that has been great in terms of being able to stitch without needing a pattern. So just that mindless stitching, which I like to do when I'm on the train or when I'm watching TV, um, has been dragged into the bed. Um, after this year, so once I finish all the black, that will no longer be the case, right? Because I'm going to have to follow the pattern for each dragon. Um, so I was thinking about what to put in place of that because I do, I like having that, that option. I don't always want to be, want to have my, my Marka Barks P out and following, um, you know, you just, it's a recipe for mistakes, right? And every time I look down at the pattern and I look at the pattern and then I look down at my, at my project or look forward at my project and then look at the TV, it's just a recipe for a disaster for making mistakes. Um, so what I'm going to do for that is I am going to use my pre-printed charts for that and thank you to uh, sorry I can't remember who it was now but someone mentioned that in the comments of my stitch with me and I, I was like dun, 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 dun. that's awesome um that's perfect so those are awesome because they're already kitted up everything's kitted and the patterns on the you know it's mindless the pattern is on the fabric I can just I can just stitch and that way those projects also move forward um, I haven't worked on any of those this year at all um, because I haven't fit in with my goals. But next year, I think that's what's going to take the, the place of dragons in my mindless stitching. Okay, so I think that's all I have for you. That was a lot. Uh, think if you stuck this, if you stuck with me this long, Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate uh, each and every one of you, whether you've stayed this long or whether you cut out after the whips were done. That's okay. Um, not everybody likes the, the waffling. Um, but thank you so much. I really appreciate each and every single one of you. I am um, almost at the 1500 mark. Um, and I was thinking about what I might do in terms of giveaways once I hit the 1500, uh, whether I want to do that or whether I want to wait till 2000. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I, like I said, I really appreciate it. There's so many, so many floss tubes out there, uh, which is fantastic. Um, and I appreciate your spending some time with me, uh, each and every week because it does tend to be every week now, either alternating between the Stitch With Me's and this. I really like how that how that is going because it gives me enough time to get some progress on projects to show you. And then it also gives me time to just chat about, about life and whatever is going on um, in my world. Um, and I like hearing from you guys as to what you guys are working on and what you're you know, projects that, that we have in common or projects that you're working on and whatever is going on in your life. I, I love it. Um, I love, I love having that uh, camaraderie. So if you've stuck out long, this, if, if you're still here, thank you so much. If you haven't, please consider subscribing, um, and hitting the notification bell so that you hear when my next, um, video is out. And I will see you next week, hopefully, for a stitch with me. I don't know what 
let me know in the comments if you're still here let me know in the comments what you would like to what project you'd like me to work on for the stitch with me um, any one of my projects is fine you guys um, if you've watched my my uh, Whip Parade, <laughs> then you know which ones, what all I have, or even if it's one of the focus projects, one of the whips that I showed you today, uh, that's fine. Just let me know. Um, you guys can vote on it and then we'll work on, we'll work on that. Okay. Cheers until the next time, my friends, if you can be anything, be kind and I'll see you next time.